All right, guys, here we are. I am with, man, I, you know, I keep seeing, uh, putting myself in these situations we've never talked before, except for the two minutes that we just talked a second ago. My man, Sean, how you doing, Sean Anthony? Doing good, man. Let, let's get it, man. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, this is just something I try, man. I, I don't know. It's like sometimes it turns out really good and I get good feedback. Like people like the podcast and then some people are, sometimes people are like, yo, dude, don't do that again. But I don't know. <laughs> I keep jumping back in the fire. That's how you should, man. Always keep putting your best foot forward. Yeah, you know, I think you got to get like, uh, I feel like one of the problems that we have in the world, well, America especially, I, I keep saying the world, but I, I don't know the world other than really America sometimes, is uh, is we don't talk to each other. Like like two people that are strangers will like, will, like we'll be sitting right next to each other and rather than like say hello to the person, we'll just look at our cell phones. You know, most, most certainly, man, it's, it's that constant feeling of not wanting to be like, like involved that people feel a lot in America. Well, we just start. Sometimes I feel like we just like we like when we watch all the news and everything, we, we start to feel like we're going to disagree with everyone so much. And I just yeah, don't man. like go ahead. Yeah, man, I think I think it's I think it's a scary part of just friction, right? Like just running up against friction of people not agreeing upon each other. I think a lot of people are afraid of. I, but I don't think we disagree that much. People like in, like I don't think too many. I don't think like if you sat down and not like in front of a camera where like it's gonna like on the news, right? Or mm -hmm. in, in 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 a in an area where it's charged. Like I'm just saying, you and some dude are sitting down at the DMV. You know, and he and they look nothing like you They're, they you know, who knows where you're from or you're sitting at Disney World, right? Because at Disney World, man, that person could be from anywhere. And when you sit down and talk to that person, I think you're going to I think you're going to agree more than you're going to disagree. Of course, we're going to disagree on some things, but I, I feel like we can find some common ground. Absolutely, man. I would, I would agree with that, too. Man. I think usually when people disagree, it has to deal with like politics and policy. Man, it really does have to deal with like human nature, theory, and ethics. Right. No, no. We all want the same things, right? We want our we want to love our families. We want to, you know, if you have kids, you want to you want your you want to take good care of your kids, you know, and then you want to have a good life. That sums it up, man. So tell everyone a little bit. Um, tell everyone what it is that you do, Sean. Like, like why, why, why? Yeah, how did I come across your profile? I don't, I don't even remember how I. I think it was a couple of weeks ago. And and why and yeah. why it is you do what you do. Yeah, man. So what I do now, man, is that I started as a young kid at 14, like just going full pledge entrepreneurship, man. I, I watched my brother go off to college and he went to college. And he started throwing these crazy, iconic parties uh, with like huge hip hop artists like Rick Ross, Young Jeezy. So I was 14. Oh. Yeah, man, I was 14 exposed. I was 14 in the club uh, on, on VIP <laughs> couches, all those crazy things, man. And so I came Hold back. On. I got to like, stop you. Hold on. I got to stop you. How the fuck did your brother get young Jeezy and Rick Ross? Man, he was, he was the king of this party nightlife, man. He was where king. are you? Where, where was this? So this is in North Carolina. This is a okay. uh, huge uh, HBCU, historic black college. My name was North Carolina a &T. So they're known for having like the greatest homecomings on earth. They call their homecomings g -ho. Um, Anybody who's anybody has been at one of these homecomings. And so my brother was involved with all the nightlife, all the parties. Um, so he, he had all these artists. And so I was just around there with him, um, partying with him. But what, what's so crazy is that I learned how he was doing it. I learned how he was marketing, how he was communicating, how he was setting up deals. And I took those same strategies back to my hometown. So at 14, man, I went back home to Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. I threw a, my very first party and we made six thousand dollars when I was fourteen, and so we threw a graduation party. Yeah, Yo, you were rich as fuck. Hi, fourteen. Yeah, man. 14, fourteen, six G's, six, six, six bands, man. It, it, <laughs> that's a lot. That's that's. That, I held everybody down in the cafeteria. I was like, I was like big meat of the cafeteria, man. Every <laughs> chick, chicken sandwiches on me, man. It was that type of life, man. Oh well, well, yeah, man. What was it? Two bucks? Yeah, man. It was like it was like two fifty nowadays. Right. All right. <laughs> I, I think what's so crazy is that, like, if I look back at just that little moment, is that to be at the age of 14, you think about nowadays, a 14-year-old could never attract an 18-year-old to wanting to come party, but we did it. You know, so uh, we had them. We had them from multiple schools, which I think is still crazy. But I took, I was excited at that point to go to college, just like my brother, but I didn't care about my education. 
I wanted to go to college to chase the bag. I wanted the money. I wanted I wanted to continue to do, you know, more six thousand dollars and more type things. Uh, so I was excited and then we continued went to college. I went to uh Western Salem State University. And so I went to a school that's probably about twenty minutes, about twenty, thirty minutes away from my brother because I didn't want to go to the same school as him because I didn't want to be that guy's little brother. I wanted to create my own little path and that's what I did, man. And I threw some the most craziest nightlife venue parties you can think of with like athlete number one being draft picks because I knew the strategy I was doing that all throughout college and then funny thing happens in college if you're listening to this everybody's going to leave they're going to go back home they're either going to have a degree or not have a degree and I knew that was going to happen so I wanted to switch it up and so I took that all those skills that I had learned man and I went corporate uh, for four years and I was promoted six times in four years so as this was happening, you're saying you went corporate, my, you got a corporate job is what you're saying. Yeah. After okay. I graduated. Yeah. So I graduated, I graduated my degree, um, in, in, in psychology and in disciplinary studies. I graduated with that degree, took those skills. I knew since I was 14, I went corporate for four years and I was promoted six times in two States and all my friends were stuck, man. They didn't know what to do. They were just lost. And I actually took a promotion. I talk about this all the time. I took a promotion, man, that was six hours away from my family. So I'm driving six hours away from my family and I'm about to fall asleep, literally. So the only way I could stay up was that little purple app in the Apple iPhone called Podcast. So I'm listening to this podcast with guys like uh, Ed Milet, Chris Drama Path, all these guys who've now been on my show. I'm listening to this podcast. I'm like, you know what? I could do that. I mean, not only could I do it, but I knew people were just always connected with me at a young age. And so that, that's what caused me to create uh, Schools Over Now What, which is now a top 100 podcast in the business category. Hell yeah, man. And that's, do you just podcast or what else, What do you know? What do you yeah, know? man. So the, so the podcast has led to people, I mean, think about even with some sports team, the branding aspect is there. So I, right now what I currently do, I have the, uh, the Now What Academy. So with the Now What Academy, we help entrepreneur-minded individuals that are trying to go to that next level and we help them build personal brands that they've been able to leverage to get in, whether it's articles or to get, you know, more into sales and the marketing or even a strategy or a business plan. That's what we help a lot of people do now. Gotcha. Okay. Um, are you, are you the, are you a Gary V guy? Like no college or do you think college is important? Oh, that's a good question. I think Gary V like, I kind of, it's kind of like in his own lane. I think almost everybody's in their own lane and they separate themselves from people that they're watching. I mean, I, th I think Kyle, no, what I mean, I, what I mean, yeah, just the opinion, yeah, not I like think, if you think, like are I, doing what Gary V is doing. I, I don't yeah, know. I th yeah. I think, I think college is needed for a certain, at a certain degree. You're a doctor, man. You about to operate on me. You better went to school, man. Yeah, you better go to school for <laughs> 10 years. Fuck you. Yeah, I don't want yeah. you learning. I don't want you learning on the street because that might be yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, man. You better go to school for something like that. You're a nurse trying to save somebody's life, man. You better go to school. I mean, like, like I think those, like, it's needed for the, for stuff like that. But if you're really trying to go out here and, like, really go at it, you you can learn more by, you know, following and studying from a person like yourself or somebody like me than you probably could in college because we've been there, we've done that, um, and we kind of got an idea of what it takes to get there. Um, and that's what I'm talking about right now. If you're listening, it's more of finding the right mentor or find, like, you, you can learn more from that aspect than you could from a four-year degree unless you're about to try to stay in somebody's life. Yeah. I always wonder, like, so I have, uh, I got a couple kids that I work, you know, like one kid, you know, who, who I've, I've blown it with, like his brother, I really like my school has saved his life, you know, but then his brother, uh, you know, somehow same kid, you know, same place doing the same stuff, but dropped out of high school and yada yada. And they're poor, right. They're poor Mexican kids. And, um, the one, the one that dropped out, like, I just don't see another path for, especially, uh, you know, I am like, I'm, I'm a half black Jew. I'm me, it's me and Sammy Davis jr. That's it. We're the only two black Jews in the world, <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> but like for the poor, for the underprivileged education is the way out to start a lot of times. Cause like, you know, like what Biggie said, you're either slinging crack rock or you got a wicked jump shot for most of them you know, for most minorities. Yeah. So education is the way that's like, that's the only place where I like verge on, on Gary V's idea of like, come on, man, do your own thing, but go ahead. Cause you, you yeah, man, I, I, yeah, man, I think, I think it really comes down to like what, what you've been exposed to. 
Like if I'm in the streets, like all, all I know is the streets. I'm gonna do the streets. It's all I know. But if I if, if I'm exposed to you know something different, then my thought process is a little different. You don't, you only know what you can actually see happen. I um, I think that's what everybody. So if you're if you're in the poor, you're in the ghetto. Like if that's all you've been around, that's it. But you get around some people, dude. You spend some time around the Oprah Winfrey's, the the Ed Milet, the uh, whoever it could be, Mark Zuckerberg. You go spend a couple of days with them. You come back, you ain't never the same. So it's, it's all about who you're exposed to and who you're getting around. Yeah, for sure. I like what you said right there. When you when you see when you feel the top, you're never the same. I can remember, for me, I did never. martial arts, right? Like I fought, you know, I was mm-hmm. a pro fighter. I can remember very specific instances when I went and trained with the very, very best person in the world. Like I've, I've had that opportunity multiple times. And when I did that, like, I mean, after they just mop the floor with you, cause I, you know, cause I wasn't even close to that level yet. I was like, Whoa, like I went back to the gym the next day. And I was like, hold on, man, I'm better. Like, cause, cause I saw what something I saw what the next le- I thought I saw what level up was, you know, I was like, wait a minute. I shouldn't be better from one day, from one experience. It didn't make sense. You know, it didn't make sense, but I, I was just better. Yeah, man. And I think, I think that's, that's the key because you got a taste of, of what it feels like. You know what I mean? If you go in the gym and, you, and you're trying to pa- practice a fadeaway jump shot and you got somebody like Kobe Bryant guarding you and then you go back to like, like the Division One league or Division Two league in college, you're going to hit that shot. The chances of hitting that shot are a whole lot more, you know, likely now. I think that's because you had that exposure for sure. Yeah, the exposure is such a key. I was talking to somebody the other day and we were talking. Um, I don't know how we got on the conversation, but we got there somehow. Um, and, I, and, I, and he was this uh, skinny, skinny. He's my, my wife's general contractor for her. She has an uh, interior design business, you know. And he's this skinny uh-huh. white dude from Russia, you know. And I was like, and he, and we were like disagreeing on a topic we were talking, but it wasn't like um, badly disagreeing. Like we were, we weren't like mad or anything. And I was like, man, just imagine if I told you that your only way out right now, you're five foot eight, right? You, you don't have a muscle in your whole body. And I told you that the only way you could make it was to go play in the NBA. You'd be fucked, <laughs> right? It'd like be over. it'd be, be over. over. You're, you're 30 years old. You know, you, you couldn't make the NBA. It'd be over. I was like, so that's what we have to do. We have to get a lot of people. We have to get people in front of a lot of people, a lot of successful people so that you can see all these different opportunities and avenues. And it sounds like that's what you're trying to do, right? Like you don't care what the person's trying to do. You're just like, oh, here, oh, there. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, man. I mean, that, that, I mean, that, that's spot on. And it's about like, like giving people that, that hindsight. I mean, th- sometimes for me, it's about giving back. Like, th- like there's plenty of people who come from, you know, circumstances where they, they don't have the vision to be able to see these things. And the uh, first thing comes to my mind is when we went back to uh, my alma mater and we did a, a live podcast and I'm in a room full of like 400 plus uh, kids who probably don't have that exposure all the time. And it, But what they did get was they got a glimpse, they got a vision, they got somebody that was in those chairs just like them. So when I walk out of that room and they continue on next week, next month, or next year, they know it's possible. What was your, so man, it's such, that's, it's exactly what we have to be doing, right? Like, uh, uh, Obama says it best. You gotta, you know, I watched him on let him, you gotta sprinkle some of that luck dust, you know, yeah. as many people as possible, you know, as just, many people as possible, man. Cause mm-hmm. everybody, like you said earlier in this conversation, people ain't always got that. What, where are you, what, what was your upbringing? Like, where, like, how did you, like, you know, you went to college, your brother went to college. What were your parents like? Where, like, what, what was that like? Did you know? Yeah, my brother's full fledged entrepreneur, so he went to college. He didn't graduate. I'll get it. Oh, he shit. He just said, on. fuck he it. He went on. Yeah, man. And, I, and now it was so crazy. Back to what you were talking about earlier. Now he owns, like, his other buildings. Instead of having these parties in these buildings, he owns these buildings. He's running these buildings. He's running these yes. people. That's the way to do it. <laughs> McDonald's, bro. McDonald's, <laughs> right? That's what I'm trying to do, too. Like, I have martial arts schools now. You know, yeah, and we're yeah, like yeah, opening yeah. martial arts schools. Fuck the, I mean, okay, I shouldn't say fuck the martial arts school because I love martial arts, right? <laughs> but like, give the martial arts school away. You want to own the real estate, son. Yeah, man, get the building, <laughs> man, man. It's a whole different ball game. McDonald's. <laughs> but like, but for me, man, I come from a two-parent household. My, my mom always was somebody that was just, just driven. My dad, you might like this. My dad is a professional uh, bodybuilder. So, okay. and, and so now, you know, he went IFBB pro. 
He won like Miss North Carolina, every trophy you can think of. And now he trains people. So like I come from like that that mindset of a champion, the mindset of a go getter, and it's just in my DNA. Yeah, it's so crazy how that is. Like I come from uh, re- my 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 dad was re- you know uh, who was who's the black side of me was ridiculously poor. You know, like mm-hmm. six six people, one 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 room house, cooking. Like if you want if you want to take a bath, you got to heat the water on the stove. You know, mm-hmm. and then, you know, and my mom, my mom her parents who I spent a ton of time with were Holocaust surviving Jews in the concentration. Oh, wow. camp. You know, so I grew up with those kind of stories. So like that story, like every time something, you know, like for you, what you were saying, champion that mindset, right? Like for yeah. some reason, like you got lucky that those were your parents. Right. Yeah. But, but at, 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 at the same time though, like, you know, my, my dad, like one thing he made very crystal clear, man, they come from the projects, man. They, they, they came from, hot dogs on Friday, government cheese on Friday. It, it, the thing about them and their mindset, I think which helped me is that they came from it, saw it, found their way out, moved, located, and built their own legacy. And But they never forgot those stories and shared those stories with me. So like, even when I would go back and, and my grandma uh, back in Scotland, North Carolina, and we were spending like a weekend with her, we were spending that weekend in the project. Uh, yeah. That's where she was at. Um, so I, at, the same, at the same time, I think what helped me, though, is the fact that I had a vision. I've seen the pe- people who've been through, you know, hard circumstances make it out. That's why I think what was, was the, the eye opener. Yeah. And, and a lot of time with those people, right? Like, uh, well, we got we got to step your coffee game up, man. <laughs> we can't we can't be going. <laughs> we gotta that's, step the, that's, the, that's the quick run, man. There's no Starbucks yeah. around here. All right, all right, all right. If it's a quick it's run, like, we'll you're all right. It's, we'll like, it's like three espressos. I hear you, man. I hear you, but we gotta step your coffee <laughs> game, man. All right. <laughs> I'm a coffee connoisseur. We'll talk after. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, like that. Like it's what you said. You got to spend a lot of time around those people, and you got yeah. and and they didn't let you forget. Mm-hmm. what that what suffering was like and what was like no like this this uh i feel like a lot of people think that that couldn't be them today in the world mm-hmm. right like 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 you know like your 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 dad's life growing up in your in your grandma's life like like that that couldn't be them and look it probably would be really hard for you in this current situation to get like that broken in the projects now like that yeah, would take a lot hard. of fucking up that would be really hard yeah. right be really hard but if you rewind to a point in your life, in everyone's life. And when, when we make these little decisions, man, it couldn't, everyone could be there so easily. Like, mm-hmm. that's not that hard, you know? Yeah, I mean, but it, 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 it could happen on a snap of a finger, like if you do the wrong thing. See, for me, uh, I've always had the ability to attract a diversity collection of friends. So I had the white friends, then I had the black friends, and then I had to like I lean more towards my friends who were in the hood because we just com- we were just common to each other. We understood language language together, and we did a lot of things we shouldn't have done. We've been in situations where if we did the wrong move, I wouldn't be talking to you right now. We done, sure. we, we 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 done those type of things, man, and where we could either been dead or or in jail uh, that we don't really speak a lot about. And that's because we just were thinking it was cool. We were thinking it was fun and making a positive connection with people. So I, it all goes back to just realizing, you know, in the snap of a finger, it could go left or it could have went left. Right. At, and like, like we just said, not now. Like that, that'd yeah. be hard yeah. to, to too go smart now. now. Too smart. Yeah. Too smart now. Too smart. And look, I'm assuming you have some money as well. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah, we do. So like you could hire a good lawyer no matter what happened. Like you're not, Bernie, you're not Bernie Madoff in a motherfucker. Right? Like, you're not running <laughs> yeah, a Ponzi scheme. I, yeah. I could, yeah. I couldn't do that like that. I'm not on American greed. <laughs> right. You know? So like, you know, you, uh, so like, yeah, you know, you could, you could, you could pay your way as I could pay yeah. my way out of most things now. Yeah. But that, that was, that isn't, that isn't everyone's case. And that wasn't our case 20 years ago. So mm-hmm. like to, to think that you couldn't be broken, downtrodden and beaten, you know, if you live that person's life, then I think you're just making mistakes. And I think, I'll, I think that's one of the things that we fuck up is we're like, oh man, look what I did. Like you try to take all this credit for yourself. And mm-hmm. I just don't believe in the self-made man. hundred percent, man. I think, I think it, it, you have to realize Prepare yourself to today for what can happen tomorrow. Yeah. 
Yeah. So talk more about your, your childhood. What made you, what made you want to do this entrepreneur life, right? Like what, what drove you to that and what made you drove you to like, you know, there's the entrepreneur life where you just fucking sell and make money. Right. Yeah. But there's the entrepreneurial yeah. life where it's like give back and try to, try to, try to really influence the world. Yeah, man. I think about impact, man. You didn't think about like you can go work for a company right now. Um, you can go be a president of that company, CEO of that company. You die. Cool story, bro. No one cares. You are the president and CEO of a certain company. They just move on and get another president and CEO. I, I, my, my goal is to leave an impact in the way people do education. Um, my goal is to leave an impact on the way people view, you know, uh, uh, just a young black guy doing his thing. I've been on couches. Um, and some of the biggest names, in, like even in the podcast industry, at their home and had private conversations about how I was literally one of the few people in this space trying to do what I'm trying to do. Um, a lot of people, you know, with a platform, you know, it, it, let's be honest, some of those, you know, big radio personalities, they're not always the positive type of guy. I think for me, I want to be able so my son or my daughter, grandkids in the future can get on the internet go into Google, type Sean Anthony, scroll down all the articles, read them, and realize that his purpose was impact. His purpose was, was it financial gain. I mean, you think about it, it's all about mentality. You think about entrepreneurship. People who are way older than us, you think about you know people who are like your in-laws or your fathers or whatever. Some people view legacy as equity. Some people view legacy as leaving financial stability. I can leave you all the equity and financial stability and you screw it up tomorrow because you never knew how to handle it. And all this stuff you, you saved for me, I've already blown. For me, my legacy is the impact that I'm going to leave. So when, I, when I'm out of this place, somebody can press play and listen to words I said. Somebody can press play and listen to the questions I might have asked somebody who was a billionaire that's going to unlock their thought process. I'm after the impact, man. I'm not after anything else. Money's going to follow the impact. Yeah, you can, money's easy. You know, once you figure out how to make money, that shit's easy, in my opinion. Easy. You know, it's like, it does, and who cares? Like, I, I hate saying, like, who cares? Because there might be someone like, like that's dead broke listening to it, and it's like, yo, I, I could use 10 grand, right? Like, so, I, and I understand that. And and it's it's a privileged thing for me to be able to say, like, who cares sometimes? But, like, uh once you figure that out, like it's, it's, it, it becomes so almost like, yeah, whatever, you know, like what, like, like you said, how am I going to impact someone's life? Cause I could give someone, I could give you 50 G's. If I gave you 50 G's right now, you'd, you'd be fucked in six months. Yeah. Yeah. You, you wouldn't know, you wouldn't know, you wouldn't know what to do with it, man. It'd, yeah. be, a, it, it'd be a rap. You wouldn't know what to do with it. You'd just be, I mean, you you could do you can get someone fifty G's, man, and they go snort it tomorrow and be dead by the, by by uh, two p.m. Yeah, <laughs> they'd be like you. Yeah, they'd be like you at fourteen, six. You know, in in the cafeteria. <laughs> Yo, let's go. We rich. You know, <laughs> Every, everybody, everybody on me. Oh, free man. free cheeseburgers. Let's go. I, look, I think I, I think at the time at the time too, with so many hip hop artists out around that time too. I tell people all the time. I think one of the best things that happened to me. People always ask, you know, how did you have the ability to collaborate with people and connect? One of the best things that happened to me is that the, the culture. What was happening during that time? So I came in like like even in sixth grade, man. Bow Wow, Lil Romeo, those guys were hot, dude. I'm not a tall person. I was killing them on the playground. <laughs> so at the same time, it's just about the culture, man. I think a lot of it was, was leaning my direction. What would you? Yeah. What do, what do you mean? Talk. talk what, what's the? What was the culture? What, what does that mean? Talk more about that. Yeah. So what I mean by that is that, like, like the way, like, like I come from the era. I come from the era where, like, hold on. Can I ask you a question? How old are you? Twenty nine. You're twenty nine. So you're you're a millennial. All right. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. come so yeah, I, I come. I, I come, I come from the era, man, where like like we were really adapting to trends. We were adapting to trends. We would see the trends, and I think I think even right now, I think the same thing. If someone's listening to this, even if they were like fifteen or sixteen, dude, if you're adapting to trends, TikTok should be your number one place. Everything like the whole the whole thought process of entrepreneurship is nothing but a circle. It's kind of like fashion. Everything can keep getting you. That's why like Napoleon Hill and all those books. That's why they're still relevant today. Yeah. It's just really, it's really a circle, man. You just got to realize how to use it. So listening to what I'm saying right now, if you're in that space, 
adapt to those trends. That's all we were doing. We were adapting to the trends first. We were running full force with them. People recognized it. And then, I mean, it's labeled as what's hot. Man, I open up TikTok, bro. And it's just a bunch of fucking teeny bopping chicks. Hey, now you can do it, man. You're out of the game. You just got to go? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You yeah, just got to go? Man. Like, I don't, I don't want to look at TikTok. It doesn't yeah, do anything it, for it, me. It, it ain't the way. It ain't the way. It ain't the way for you, man. I mean, it's, it's really, it's, it goes about, too, also about knowing your audience. That's when, like, I did the podcast, and I was like, you know what? I want to hit everybody from 18, 25, where they at? They on Instagram. They weren't on LinkedIn. I mean, right. so like I, I knew that, so I established a heavy base on Instagram, and then I really started like as of recently started to kind of float on LinkedIn, just so those companies know that you know, hey, I can book this guy for speaking, or hey, I can book this guy for university. So I, like, you know, I started dipping into that, and that, because that's where all the moving shakers on calling the shots are at. Um, but yeah, man, it's, it's blowing where your audience is at. Like, you if you're that young, and you're trying to adapt the trends, go TikTok, man. But yeah. went back from back to me and I talked about, about the culture, I know the trends were, I knew where the fashion things were. Like it, you know, I grew up in high school, the number one thing, it's so funny, I never talked about this. When I grew up from middle school to high school, the number one thing everybody wanted then was superlative. Was and, it's, and then those was was superlative. So those year, end of the yearbook type of things. Dude, winning like best dress in my hometown was like winning a freaking Oscar. Um, okay. and, and, and so I won that Oscar. <laughs> so it's just, all, it's, all, it's just all about like what you set your mind to. Like, oh, that's the plateau people want? I'm going to go get it. I mean, but that, that, that changed for everybody, you know. So I think it's really a, a understanding what's happening around you. How can you be involved more and then shifting it? And then you taking it somewhere where it works for you. Exactly. That's it, man. That's, that's really the formula. Almost everything. What what does your grind look like on the day to day? Uh, the grind on the day to day, man. The grind on the day to day. I'm I'm always thinking about content. I used to say I wanted to post on Instagram like once every day and you know, keep being pushing stuff out there. But I'm really starting to pay attention to you know the analytics, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to give them valuable information whenever I feel like it. Because because instead of just like whoosh whoosh, I'm gonna just give them valuable information whenever I feel like it. And there's also some times where, you know, I, I know people personally, they feel like content is king and the more content they push down your throat, eventually one of them going to click with you. Right. So, yeah, like, it, there's it, two it, schools of thought there, right? There's two, two like, schools. Like Gary, Gary V just fucking chucks it. Right? Yeah, just chucks it. Grant Cardone does too. Yeah, they just they, boom, boom, boom. Just feed. throw it out there. See what sticks. They just feed it. They feed it. They feed it. They feed it. They work at work and I mean and that's a good strategy too if you have the content built up so if you have it built up go ahead and do it but if you don't have it built up you need to figure out you know, how am I gonna give them a little impact right or if you have like a fucking uh what's Gary what's Gary's guy's name D-Rock D-Rock, yeah, D-Rock. Yeah. if you got D-Rock to fucking follow you around right you can you know if you got enough money that if you build it to the point you got enough money you can just have yeah, D-Rock man. like filming you yeah, taking just, piss then you know yeah 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 d-rock man d-rock can catch you going through the drive-thru and it's on con- it's content you know what <laughs> what I mean? so, little stuff like that you good yeah yeah and then you can just fucking sh- throw content at the fucking wall throw it man so are, are you on tiktok no Fuck i'm not yeah. <laughs> right. i'm not I'm not right. on TikTok. I'm right. on it. I just look at it. You know, I signed up just to see what it was up. But I, I, I clicked the button. I watched like four or five videos. It was like some really young kids up there. Not even having a good time. But I just couldn't get cheated with it. I just couldn't do it. Oh. <laughs> Bro, I'm sitting there. I can't be out there. I can't be out there. I just couldn't do it, man. It was just not me. It was man, not I- me. Funny to watch, though. Funny, funny to, watch. to watch. Funny to watch. I was sitting at dinner last night, right? And this, uh, we went to the neighbor's house, and uh, the, the one of the girl, one of the, the you know the teeny bopping chicks. She's like seventeen or sixteen or something. Yeah. Got, got a driver's license, like I don't know, six months ago. She starts telling this story about how she got a hundred thousand likes on TikTok, and I was like, "You got a hundred thousand likes? You're sixteen years old, like." the fuck you do? And she's like, well, you know, I was driving and I got pulled over. And then she just starts telling this story and her parents were sitting at the table and they didn't know this. Right. And I was like, yo, you just ratted yourself out, girl. You just said you were tick talking while driving and got pulled over. And she's like, uh, yeah, man. Uh, uh, uh. She was like, oh, shit. 
I, I bet you it was amazing to watch though. Uh, like, dude, she just kept going. She just kept going, telling her story. And her dad was just like this. Like they were at opposite ends <laughs> of the table. And for like five minutes, he was just like waiting for her to make eye contact with him, just staring. And I was like, yo, Asa, have yeah. you not noticed your dad just like fucking staring at you? And she's like, huh? He goes, <laughs> we'll talk. You know, I was like, oh shit, girl, you yeah. just fucked up. <laughs> Yeah, man, what's so crazy about this, though, and I would, and I would highly encourage people, too, and, and some people may figure this out, some people may have already figured this out. What do you do with the 100,000 people that just watched you? How do right. you turn that into profit? I mean, yo, you own. <laughs> you yeah. I mean, you, you, you own. I mean, you, you, you own. I think, I think that's, that's, the, that's the catcher. I mean, but that's more entertainment, not impact. So if I was doing TikTok and I was on entertainment piece, I'd be on like IMDB Pro. I'd be putting up a profile, actress, actor. I would be looking for like comedy skits. I would probably hop on a stage. That's the way if I would do if I was that little girl. Sure. <laughs> yeah. That's how, that's how I would go about it, man. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. And then that might be, you know, my you know, part of my, you know, my my highlight reel. And now you gotta send that highlight reel all that would be part of. Right. Yeah, for sure. It just, you know, I think that's just what happens to so many people. Like they, like, like you said, she got a hundred thousand likes. That's, you know, she got a hundred thousand people to look at her. Um, I don't think she's trying to, you know, I think she just happened to get a hundred thousand people, but that's what happens though. You, when you're not trying, that's what it happens. You just do you, think, that's yeah. I don't think she wants to either. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know. I didn't talk okay. to her more about it, but a lot of people like they get that hundred thousand once and then they have no clue what to do with the, that hundred thousand people. Nothing, man. They got nothing. They just tried to make another little funny video. <laughs> and the the what the funny part about it was she wasn't even trying the first time, right? Like man, it was so just natural. Yeah, because of being that good, yeah. Yeah. Of being that good I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. So, um, again, back to your day to day. So, like you, what, 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 how? So, so I get up. Yeah. I get up before everybody else, man. I get up usually right about uh, right about four four a.m. Um, I get up by about 4 a.m. Sometimes give or take, might be like five. Right. Um, and then what I kind of do, like there, there's certain techniques if I'm really trying to like like wake up, if I'm really like drowsy. Um, I'll do the cold shower trick. Who hasn't heard of that? But uh, Jim Quick uh, mentioned about brushing your teeth with the opposite hand. It allows for like brain neurons to rush through your head early in the morning, which requires you to think about you know functional things and mobility and it, it just start, like just stirs your mind. So if you're right-handed. Wake up tomorrow for the next 14 days. Brush your teeth with your left hand. Thank me later. Watch what happens. No shit. So look, yeah. Watch what happens. Watch what happens, man. What if you got one of those electric toothbrushes? Still just do it with your left hand. Yeah, just a different hand. Electric, use that electric toothbrush for every one you use. Watch what happens, man. You're gonna be That's like, what am I thinking about this? That should end up in your nose sometimes when you're tired with your left hand. Like, nah, man. Nah, <laughs> just be like, I was like, all right, cool. But then you're like, dang, did I do this? Did I do that? You know what I mean? But after a while, you know, a little stuff like that. I mean, your, your normal routine of like espresso, coffees, uh, drinks, whatever it is, and then kind of like get the rolling, you know, whether that's taking in, you know, reading or books or audio or, you know, it kind of varies for me. Sometimes depending on what I'm doing or where I'm going, I might need a little inspiration and it might be a certain artist, a certain song, you know, just to pump me up and get me ready for whatever I got going on for that day. Um, and it depends on whether or not, too, if I'm traveling. So, like, if I'm traveling somewhere, if I'm about to go do an interview with somebody, um, that's a different type of routine because more I'm thinking about, okay, cool, I got to get ready for this. Or, like, okay, cool, how are they going to be when I get there? Because everybody's different. Everybody's different. Some people that you see online, you see them in person, and they way cooler. They way cooler. You're like, hey, why you don't show them this person online? They way cooler. And some people you see in person, and they just they just got that that Hollywood superhero type flow. Like they got that like that that, that vibe. You're like you know what? Like I right, I I see it. You know, right. what I mean? like yeah, like you ready? You know what I mean? And 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 you you have to approach that a little bit differently because that's more of a preparation mode, I would say. Um, and that's really how I kind of go about my day. You know what I mean? If, and if I have clients I have to talk to, they're booked on the calendar. Uh, calendar. Um, I, I'm setting up, zooming them, or I'm talking to them for you know, I have a coaching period they need to pay for. Um, I'm doing that. I um, mean, and then between the end of that, I always have like one day where I kind of batch things. So if it's a podcast and it's about editing, I'm focusing on just editing content. Um, and if it's focusing about you know the next guest or locking down guests, I'm locking down people. What's your, do you have a team that helps you or is it just you? I have one guy that helps me uh, who does a whole bunch of like like the visual aspects. 
Um, he does a lot of that. And then when it comes to like booking certain people, I'll book them and then he'll set it up and then kind of make sure everything is good from that end. Um, and then I'll talk to them again when it's all set up. What made you say yes to me? Make sure yes to you, man. Do you an MMA fighter, man? <laughs> I do my I do I do my research, man. I mean, you know, you're, you're you're a fighter, so I you got to have some type of you know passion and behind doing what you're doing. Um, and you and you definitely wouldn't be about wasting anybody's time. And also, to anybody that that is in a certain field or arena and they crossed over to something like this, I know they're about making an impact. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I, I'm trying to, you know. Like that's, yeah, man. I'm trying to make an impact because I was super lucky in my life, you know? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. And that's the, that's the part too. I think, I think also too, just the, the diversity piece too, man. I had some really big guys that was like really popular and I said, you know, very similar question. And they said, they said, man, be honest with you, the diversity too, the diversity, knowing that another black brown guy is actually trying to do something like this. Oh, I'm on that. I mean, yeah. so is that, is that, is that piece? A lot of guys say that to me. Yeah. I, I feel you there, you know, like on all that. I know what my dad's life was like, you know, growing up in the, you know, in the 50s and 60s as a young black male. You know, I see what my dad's mm -hmm. life is like now, you know, still uh, still getting pulled over at 70 years old, mm -hmm. you know, just for people to to check it out, for the cop to check out and say, you know, I was just wondering, you know, so mm -hmm. I, I, know, I, I know what that piece is like. I've been in the car with him. It fucking sucks. Right. So, yeah, to help to help other young, uh, you know, African-American minority males is, is, is definitely something I'm trying to do. You know, it just it's not huge in the MMA world. Right. Like most of my field, definitely. most of the people that I have contact with, you know, aren't that. So like for I'm you know, I'm definitely trying to reach each different you ever, place. You ever, you, ever wonder, you, ever, you ever wonder why, though? I always thought about that, too. You ever wonder why? It's like to me, like when I, when I, when I think about that aspect. I bet you there's a lot of black guys who could have probably been MMA fighters, but they're fighting right now on the wrong battlefield. Um, they're fighting oh. right now. You know, like, 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 there's probably somebody with some really good hands that just didn't know what they could have done with it. You ever thought about that? I think it's because the, 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 the athlete, what's in front of them, I think it's the uh, the vi like what we were talking about, like what, what you th how you see to make it is a yeah. different avenue. It's, it's basketball, it's football, it's baseball, right? Like that, that's your way out. So all the athletic dudes go there, mm. you know, especially now you're starting to see it now because there's starting to be some money in the game in MMA, right? Mm. Where like, dude, I was fucking, I mean, I, I had nothing when I retired. Like, I mean, it was, I don't know, over 10 years, I probably made a half a million dollars. So mm -hmm. like, and I was, you know, at one point I hit, you know, 15 or 13 in the world. So normally, you know, in, in every other sport, if you're the 13th best in your weight class, you're, you're, you're riding gravy, right? Like, like the 13th best quarterback in the NFL, shit, right? Yeah, <laughs> shit. Yeah, they pay, the third, they the pay. third stringer's riding gravy, right? Yeah. Like he, he can't yeah. make less than $700,000 a year. But that Correct. wasn't our, that wasn't our sport. And it wasn't in front of a lot of minorities. It, like it was mostly... You know, what, if you think about her, uh, uh, history, people that are known for fighting, mm -hmm. right? Like, like, like rest, because you, you needed to be able to wrestle. If you couldn't wrestle, then you can't fight. And there's not a lot of African-Americans in wrestling, right? Because wrestling was the same time as basketball season. You know, like when you, when you come up, high school, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So it's the same time as basketball season. So those kids develop basketball skills where like more... Uh, Irish, Italian, right? Not playing basketball, yeah. white kids developing wrestling skills. So if you, you know, and, and I think it's just a lot of culture. Facts, man. Facts, man. I think, I think that's a good way of putting it in too. It's just kind of realizing what else you can do and, and being exposed to it and, and picking one or the other. You know, it's really, it's really a good way of putting it. And now, and now you're seeing it change. Right. You're, you're, you're seeing a change. You got the Tyron Woodley's, you got the yeah. style benders, you got the John Joneses, yeah. you know, um, uh, who else? Like, as far as minorities go, you get Jorge Masvidal's coming up in the game. Right. Uh, yeah, man. so, you know, one of the best pound for pound all time was, uh, was Demetrius Johnson. He's like number one, yeah. and number two, and he's a little black guy, you know? So, so a little black kid, you know, all four foot, nothing can't play basketball, but he's athletic. He's away. Yeah. Right? He's athletic. He's strong. So he had to wrestle. You know, you got guys like DC, 
you know, who are, who are paving the way for, who are at least putting, excuse me. And I, I don't really like to use John Jones as the example, because he's a fucking shit human being. Um, <laughs> but DC is actually a good, you know, is, is a, is a good human being, you know, like, like, uh, not that he would ever do my podcast, but I would never have John Jones on my podcast, you know? Well, because of his personality? Yeah, he's just not a good person, you know? He's not a good person. Like, uh, like yeah, he's been super successful, and he, he, crushes, he crushes life. I, I mean, crushes, financially crushes life, but, you know, there's this other stuff behind him that, that we... Um, yeah, a lot going on, too. Yeah, he's got a lot. Yeah, he's got a lot going on, but... You know, we there are some people that that were in the gym with him before he had a lot going on. So <laughs> we'll just leave it there. You know, <laughs> we'll just leave it there. And I'm not Joe Rogan yet. You know, Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan can have everybody on. Yeah, yeah, right? everybody on. Yeah. Like Joe Rogan has Alex Jones on, and Alex Jones is talking about when Obama said hot dog. He he he's talking about fucking little boys, you know, and like that doesn't crush Joe Rogan. But then Bernie Sanders comes on Joe Rogan's podcast and he had fucking who did he have the other day? He had Kelsey Gabbard and Jocko Wilnick, who are not on the same yeah. sides of the spectrum, you know, nowhere near it. Nowhere near it. Ed Snowden, Edward, who the, the U.S. government can't get Edward Snowden and Joe Rogan gets <laughs> Edward Snowden. <laughs> Joe, Joe can get anybody, man. I'll still wait for Joe and Kanye to tag team. I think that was one of the most hyped ones. The possibility. Ooh, God, you Joe tried. Saying? He tried. I think I don't, I don't think he can get him anymore. I don't think he can get him anymore. I think I think it was I think he can get him anymore because the way Kanye switched it up, man. Joe Rogan's not his cup of tea anymore. I don't think he's like, he's not. He, 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 I think about you be be around all that smoke, all that cussing. That ain't really Kanye anymore. That's not his arena. I know, man. But Joe, it's so crazy because Joe gets everybody. I think Joe's going to get Obama if he wants him. I don't think he can do that, but I, I, think, I, think, you know, I think the image that Kanye is putting out right now is an image that's going to have to be protected and sustained by, by Christian light uh, or uh, people in that, that space. It's got to be as clean as possible. I don't, I don't think Joe meets the cleanest. And, and Kanye, Kanye, honestly, Kanye doesn't even really need the press. You know what I mean? So no. I don't think that happens. And no, there's, no, there's no need. I mean, he could do it. I mean, if he was going to do it, I think he would have already done it for his last album. Uh, you make a really good point for the image that he like, he's trying to put, he's trying to do this. I've been saved. Yeah, like, yeah, I was just in Houston. Yeah, it's just in Houston, with, like Joel Osteen. Like it, that ain't that, that ain't the same image. Joel and Joel ain't the same image. <laughs> that, ain't, that ain't the same. <laughs> yeah, image. but Joel, the Joel's image is kind of is kind of set already. So I think Joel could go do Joe Rogan, where Kanye is trying to get people uh, to buy into I'll this think- image. I don't think Joe will do it either. I mean, I, I think because too many people like this. You really yeah, don't do that. Joe will talk to anybody, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I was at, I had a, I had a um, I had a show. Um, I was at somebody's house doing a uh, at the, doing a podcast in L.A. It was crazy, man. I, um, I ain't gonna say his name. I don't get in trouble. Um, and we were doing the podcast. He was like, "Hey, man, I let you come to my house tonight and do this podcast." He was like, "But he, I want you to know how important it is for me to do this." He said, "Cause I can't sleep dinner with Joe tonight." And I was like, "Joe, <laughs> oh, it's me. Tell him come on. <laughs> Tell him come on." Wow. Yeah, but, yeah, he kept with dinner. I'm like, yeah, that's crazy. Is that your friend? Uh, Please tell me that's your friend. Who? who like who the dude who canceled it? dinner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Dude that canceled Joel. Yeah, he is. He you, is. Should, you should have been like, yo, man, no, I'm leaving. You go. You go. <laughs> no. I'm like, man, this is crazy. Yeah, like so the guy I recorded with, he canceled Joel. Joel was supposed to come to his house for dinner, and I had dinner at his house instead of Joel. I'm not a Joel fan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think it's, I think it's more of um, I'm, I'm all about impact too, though, man. Even if you're not a fan of the guy, the guy got impact. I'm a, I'm an impact guy, man. Yeah, but I but mean, are you yeah. are you selling a bunch of shit? Do you really believe what Correct. you're saying? Right, Correct. like you, I, I, like when 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 the when the rubber he hits the road, what are you gonna Correct. do? So like you, it's it's real easy. So and I'm not a religious person, and it's not that uh, and I, it's not that I'm not religious that I don't like Joel Osteen, um. I don't like him because I don't believe him. I don't, I don't, I think he's doing what he's doing for money. I don't, and, and he's found a path. You know, it's funny. I watched it. Uh, I watched Kanye's speech at his church and Kanye uh, did say from the Christian community, Joel is getting a lot of heat. He did say that in front of all those people because uh, a lot of people do believe that. A lot of people do believe that. And I think, I think whenever you get into any space you're in or whatever field you're in, there's always going to be people who look at, you know, situations are going to judge you a little bit differently. I think that's, 
that's very, very common. Uh, we think about what happened with, with the, uh, I think it was tornado, the hurricane. The hurricane, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it's going to be that little thing. You're like, hold on, you won't let us in here? Like, it's going to be that little thing that's going to make you go crazy. Yeah, because yeah. like you're screaming, help people. Yeah, I see that. I can definitely see that. Right, you can't that. scream, help people, and then not help yeah. people. <laughs> like, like, I see that. <laughs> like, it's a terrible thing, right? I can see that because if you had if you had helped people to the highest ability, then they can never try that with you again. Right? <laughs> they can never say nothing about that like, man again. If your church, if his church, if his church would have gotten ruined, right? Like if he would have let all those people in his church, and it would have just gotten trashed, he'd be set for he'd be golden. He'd be riding yeah. gravy because he would have Jesus, it. right? He yeah. he would have destroyed yeah. his life for, yeah. for other people. It would have been iconic. It would have been like, you know what? If they if just say, you know what? Yeah, all y'all come through. All y'all yeah. come through. Get it how you live. You know what yeah. You'd have been like, you'd have been like, yo, I rock with him. I uh-huh. love him. Like, he probably would have like, flipped me, you know? Like, I've been like, damn. <laughs> like, I don't believe him. Like, I don't believe in the religion. But that motherfucker, yeah. <laughs> like, took the risk of losing everything. Everything. So that, so that somebody would have a place to sleep tonight. Everything. He put it all on line. All and, look, don't, and don't don't let him feed him too. He feed him. He on another level. Oh shit! Cause you know he's got the money to feed him too. He's flying on private jets. Hey, you you know? got the money to feed him, man. He's, he's got, got the money, money to, feed to feed him. That would be easy. So that's so that's my that is my beef with Joel Osteen. You know, is the hurricane? The hurricane is your beef with him. The hurricane, right? Because he had the opportunity. He had the opportunity to level up, man. He could have just jumped all the way up, right? He could have jumped to another category, man. He could have been on Tyler Perry status with that one. You know, like when, like when LeBron came back from three-one against the the uh, against the Warriors, he leveled up. He leveled up. up. And all you remember was the block. The block. He leveled up to Kobe and MJ status, right? Like he's the untouchable. He's the untouchable. Before he was, before LeBron was very good, he was a great, you know, a top five great of all time. But now Mm -hmm. LeBron's untouchable. He sports, he sports God. Yeah, he's Mount Rushmore, man. Yeah, he sports God. He's above Rushmore. Fuck Rushmore. They want to win the chip. They're going to yeah. win this year, too. It doesn't matter. He can do whatever he wants. It's too easy. They're going to win this year, dude. I don't know, man. Kawhi, though? Kawhi in the same uh, city, bro? Maybe. Come on. How about, but how about down in, in Houston, too, though, with fucking Westbrook and Harden nah, again? They, they, Westbrook are hard to lose to like somebody she been getting lost to. I think some, and John Morant has been just giving it to people too. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. Know, the AD LeBron, man. Yeah, we'll see what happens, you know, but but back to, you know, like Joel, Joel could have been untouchable status. He could have been yeah, like Joel. Billy Graham, right? Billy Graham's yeah, untouchable. He could, he could have definitely been Billy Graham. Billy Graham's untouchable. Like MLK is untouchable, untouchable. Yeah. It, you know, like these, like he could have moved up to, to, to that level of like reverend or I, I don't know if it's, he's a pastor. All he, had to, all, all, he had, all he had to do was sacrifice the building. The building. Fuck it, man, you got insurance. <laughs> right? Sacrifice the builder, man. The sacrifice the builder, move on with your life. Yeah, man, you got insurance, bro. Fuck it. And, you, 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 and, and this time of age, and this time of age, you could have done a GoFundMe page, and the world would have paid you back. Fuck yeah, man. Right? Like he wouldn't. It wouldn't have to be any of his. Back. Like I would have given to it if his building would have gotten ruined <laughs> during that hurricane, and he started to GoFundMe. I'd be like, yo, fuck it. Here's a hundred. Right? You- Here's a fucking hundred. <laughs> Oh, there you go, man. You deserve. You deserve. You deserve it. You deserve it. I don't care how much money you already got. You deserve it. One hundred percent. All right, man. I appreciate you coming on. I know it's the day after Thanksgiving, the early morning for me, and it's only eight forty-five out here, early morning after Thanksgiving. So, um, tell everyone where they can find you and reach you, and, and and if they need some help, where is it at? Yeah, man, I appreciate you so much for having me on, man. It's been dope. You can find me on all platforms at Sean R. Anthony underscore. You also can find the podcast Schools Over Now What, available on all audio platforms. And you can check out anything we got going on as far as the academy, everything else as far as mentorship, gear, at www.schoolsovernowwhat.com. But they cannot find you on TikTok, right? Nah, man, yeah. no TikTok. Man. Feel, <laughs> no TikTok. I live 16 under, y'all got it. Yep.
Yep. All right, guys. Well, I appreciate you coming on, man. Enjoy the rest of your holiday weekend. And hey, everybody, go out there and find your power.